And I remember as a young girl, just like always roaming the streets. We had to sleep at the park. Like we were at the park and I remember just having to sleep there and just being there on the floor. And at the time I was a young girl, so I was like crying because I was scared. Um, and I remember like just being told, crying's not gonna change the situation. I remember just like jumping from place to place and never having like stability. My name is Danielle Howell. And this is my story. Our home was always chaotic. There were a lot of times where we would jump from motel to motel and never really having a place to call home. As a young girl, I just remember feeling so much like um, unforgiveness and hurt and um, bitterness, I guess you could say, from my dad. He wasn't really there to like provide for us. And I remember just like blaming him for like never having stability. Um, and I grew up with a lot of hurt and anger towards him. And I remember him abusing my mom and my family just finally being fed up, you know, and they were helping us. And so we were, we were living there with them at my grandpa's house. I remember just them being fed up with the way he would treat my mom. And so it was kind of like a, you either choose him or you choose us. And I remember as a young girl, just like always roaming the streets, like always like never having like stability. I remember just like jumping from place to place and like feeling like embarrassed from school, you know, like I don't want my friends to know that I'm living in a motel. You know, there was times where um, we lived in a trailer outside of um, a, fr a family friend's um, backyard. And I remember just feeling like ashamed. Like we would always just find things during the day, like just roaming the streets, just finding things to do. And I remember this one night in particular that stands out to me. We had to sleep at the park. Like we were at the park and I remember just having to sleep there and just being there on the floor. And um, at the time I was a young girl, so I was like crying because I was scared. Um, and I remember like just being told like, crying's not gonna change the situation. And from that point on, I always felt like I had to like hide my emotions. You know, I had to hide like the true feelings that I felt and um, I remember just that, like bottling up all the emotions that I had to face, like it became so much anger, you know, like I was feel like I had so much anger in me. Eventually we went to back to LA um, where my dad is from. We found this homeless shelter. Um, we stood at the homeless shelter. It's the Los Angeles Mission and it's in the deep of Skid Row. And so even being there, like you could sleep there, but you can't like, you can't stay during the day. So you're just like, Again, like roaming, you know, finding things to do. And I just remember seeing things that I that I shouldn't have seen as a young girl. People doing drugs, you know, and people overdosing. And I remember just always feeling scared, you know, and we were there for a little bit. And um, I don't, I didn't know at the time, but my family was looking for us. And eventually they found us. I can't say like how long, we were probably there like six months to a year, I wanna say. We were able to stay with my mom there. They separate you with like men on one side, women and children on the other. And so we were, um, there with my mom and my family eventually found us. Um, I remember they took us away from, from my mom. And at the time, like as a young girl, you just wanna be with your mom, you know? And um, I remember um, they took us and they, set, they placed us with my uncle. And my uncle, he, was literally like, he provided for us so much. He just stepped up to be that like fatherly role in our lives that we needed. And I remember just having to like, like not let my sister see that I was hurt, you know, cause she was younger. And so every night she'd like cry for my mom. And so I just had to show her that I was tough, you know, and, and, and I wasn't hurting like the way I was. I just felt like to her, like if she seen me hurting, it would make it worse, you know? And, and so I just feel like, like I was trying to be stronger when I, when I really wasn't. From bottling up all the emotions of her and bitterness and anger, like it just caused me to be very, like a very rebellious teenager. And, and it just turned into something that um, if I would have just expressed my emotions in a healthy way, probably wouldn't have been like, I would, probably wouldn't have went down the route that I, that I went down. Eventually my mom got cleaned up. She got an apartment like my sister went back with her. And um, I sit with my uncle for a little bit longer and I just remember feeling like becoming so rebellious as a young teenager. 
By the age of 13, I was um, smoking weed. I was doing things that I shouldn't have done, but for that moment, like it felt so good, you know, because I didn't have to worry about the hurts and I didn't have to worry about the things that I had to go through. At 15, my best friend at the time in middle school, she invited me to a youth camp. And I remember not really knowing what to expect, um, but I went just thinking like, oh, a bunch of teenagers are going to have fun, you know? And so the first night I remember like um, the speaker, the, his sermon was about like, there's a father that loves you unconditionally. Like he loves you so much and, and he wants to just love you, you know, and, and, and he loves you. And I remember just like the word father to me was a hurtful word, you know, it was something that, that I, I couldn't hear because even like as my earthly father, like I couldn't even refer to him as dad or to father, like I'd refer to him as like his, his name, you know? And so I remember just hearing that and being so like confused, like what do you mean there's a, a heavenly father that loves me unconditionally when my earthly father like abandoned me, you know, he rejected to even be my father. And so I remember just feeling so confused at what he was saying, but wanting to know more. By the third night he was, just asking if there was anybody that wanted to receive Jesus in their heart. And I remember not knowing what, cause I would never knew about God or Jesus or church. And so I remember like not really knowing what to expect. I didn't know what was happening in me, but now I know it was the Holy Spirit. But like then I just felt like, what is going on? I feel this, like my heart's racing and I feel like I need to answer the call. And I remember by the third night, that was the last night he asked like, is there anyone here that wants to receive Jesus in their heart? And I remember just raising my hand and, and, and feeling just like the weight of all the hurt that I had to, that I was carrying, the the hurt that for so many years I had to deal with. Like, I remember just feeling like free, like this, like weight was lifted off of me and I just not knowing really what God was setting me up for, but now I know, you know, but then I just felt like, whoa, I feel so good. Like this feels good there's a heavenly father that loves me, you know, and, and he loves me unconditionally. And I slipped away for a little bit and then um, I came back and I was around probably 17. And I remember just telling God, like, that's it. I'm just gonna, you know, the, the world's not it for me. Like once you know God, there's no running for long, you know, he's gonna catch you. And so I remember just coming back to church and um, feeling just, that's it, I'm done. Like, I'm not gonna allow relationships to distract me. I'm gonna go full on, you know, and I'm gonna just, serve you, Lord. I'm going to serve you and I'm going to focus on you and not let nothing distract me. No relationships, no nothing. By the time I became a single, I was probably like 18, 19. We would do a lot of single events and things with our singles group. I was just going with the flow. I didn't really know where, where we were going. I just said yes and I went. And I remember we pulled up and it ended up being the Los Angeles mission. And I remember just feeling like so taken back, like, God, you brought me back here. Like, like to show me all the things you took me out of. And like people closest to me don't really know my story because it's always been easier to like forget about, you know, and, and to not really like hide it, but just if it's not spoken about, like don't bring it up, you know? And so I remember one of the sisters was like, are you okay? Cause I was just probably like shocked. I just didn't really know. Like I was like, whoa, this is crazy. Like that we would be in Skid Row where, where one time like I lived, you know? And so, um, I remember just being so taken back by the goodness of God, like, God, you are so good. Like you didn't let like more harm that probably should have been like happened to me, didn't, you know, and you got me through that. And I remember just feeling like, like so thankful to Jesus. Like you took me out of that. Eventually meeting my husband at the age of 20, I met him and by the age of 22, we were married. Um, we've been married eight years. Um, we have three kids. In August of 2020, we bought a home, and I feel like now God's showed me, like, not only do I have a home, you know, and a place to lay my head at night, but having a church, you know, in, in Paramount and a place to call home. I've always told myself, like, I wouldn't allow my kids to go through the things that I had to go through, and for them to have, like, stability, you know, it, it just feels so good. And I'm just so thankful for for God and all he's done in that. And I just feel like now, like I could forgive my dad because I know that the hurts he rejected onto me. It's like that saying like hurt people hurt people. And I know if it wasn't for the drugs, like an addiction, he would be a better person, you know? And so I just feel like now I can forgive. I know one day, like we're gonna have that, like that relationship with my dad, you know? And, and, and drugs aren't gonna always be the answer for him. And God's like been working in mine and my mom's relationship and 
and just bringing wholeness, you know, and, and forgiveness. Our earthly parents, you know, they might fail us, but our, our Heavenly Father, He doesn't like, He doesn't let us down, you know. He loves us unconditionally. Like, He loves us despite all the feelings, like, we feel are all the wrongs, you know, we've done or all the things we've done. Like, He loves us no matter what. He would love us so much, you know, that He would care to transform us and restore us and just give us a new life. If you're out there and, and you feel like unforgiveness and you feel hurt um, towards your, your earthly dad or maybe he let you down and, and you feel all this anger and hurt, I just want to tell you that there's a Heavenly Father that loves you so much. You know, He wants to wrap you in His arms and He wants to take away all those hurts, all that pain, all the anger, you know, and, and I just want to say um, in Psalm 68, 5, it says that He is a father to the fatherless and that is so true because He, he literally is your father and maybe you feel so much hurt and anger towards your, your earthly parents, but God won't let you down. You just have to allow him to come into your heart. You have to allow him to restore you and give him that open door and just watch him do amazing things in your life.